Hey, what's up guys? Nick Quintero here, and today I'm gonna to show you how I funded my first Kickstarter campaign in just two days. All right, let's go. All right, so if you aren't familiar with Kickstarter, it's a platform that's set up to help creatives, makers, and inventors crowdsource funding to bring their projects into the world without having to get money from banks or investors. The most basic way to set up a campaign is to offer the public and buyers an opportunity to fund your project in exchange for the product and other benefits for being an early supporter. Essentially, your customers are placing pre-orders for your products or whatever your project is that they believe in and they're rewarded for their support. You set the amount of money that you need for your project to become a reality. And if your goal isn't met, your backers and funders get their money back. And then you can move on to try to find a new way to fund it or just create a new project in the future. Kickstarter campaigns range from all sizes. And I believe that my campaign and project was on the lower end as far as costs go. I created a pin design and I took to Kickstarter to try to raise a total of $250 to fund the production of the pin. I was able to raise that amount in just over one day. And then I was able to add what are called stretch goals. Stretch goals allow you to add extra incentives so your buyers can increase their pledge to get the new added on products or whatever it is. And it can entice new buyers to make pledges by giving them bigger and better rewards. I started with two colorways of my pen, but I was able to unlock a third colorway through stretch goals. I was also able to add a one inch button and a sticker of the original design. In the end, I was able to raise $664 from 29 backers. And I funded my project by 265%. Even though my initial goal was pretty small, I'm still super proud of this accomplishment. I really wasn't sure if I was going to be able to complete this project and fund it through Kickstarter. So I was very, very pleasantly surprised to see how successful it was. Like I could not have asked for it to go any better. Before my last campaign, I had no previous experience with crowdfunding or Kickstarter at all. So now that it's been a few months since all of this happened, I really wanted to break down the whole process from start to finish and make sure to stick around to the end for a big announcement about my next project. The original drawing of the scorpion that I did had a regular tail in the beginning that I eventually changed to be the pen tool icon from Adobe Illustrator. The pen tool is my favorite tool in Illustrator and Photoshop, so I thought it would be a good representation of me in this design. I drew the original design in Illustrator, but it was a cleaned up version of it that actually became the production art. This is a template that I use for pen production art, and it shows the factory, every detail, and my intentions for all the art provided. It includes the size of the pen, the Pantone colors used, the metal finish, and the details for the back of the design. I partner with my pin factory so they know my preferences, but I still send this full Illustrator file. It really helps avoid confusion and delivers them the exact working art as I made it. Before I ever thought I would do a Kickstarter campaign, I actually learned some tips and tricks that stuck with me over the last few years. There were definitely a few big things that I remembered and applied to my campaign. The first tip was to give your project enough time to actually promote it before the actual launch. This will give you enough time to build up some hype and get people subscribing to your Kickstarter page so they can be notified when the whole thing actually launches. This actually gives you some time to get set up on Kickstarter because there's a few behind the scene things that you actually have to do. There's some details that you need to confirm regarding your identity, your payment and bank information, and actually give Kickstarter time to approve your campaign. The second tip was to craft the details of your story so that they actually mean something to your potential backers. It's better to help the people feel connected to your story and your project rather than just coming out like asking random people for money. Like that's never really a good look. You have to make sure that they understand the reasons that you're looking to crowdfunding and why you want them to be the actual crowd that's funding your project. Being real and transparent here is really the key. This way, you're not just selling them a product, you're giving them an opportunity to be a part of something that really means something to you, and it also makes it mean something to them. The third tip was to add photos and possibly a compelling video to your campaign. This way you can show them sketches or behind the scenes settings of you working on your project, 
and give them an idea of what they can expect it to be like in the end. I wasn't really making videos like I am now when I launched my first campaign. So I only was able to show like photos of pins that I made in the past to give a good example of what my designs look like in that medium. And I really think if I had a video, it would have just taken it to the next level. The fourth tip is to not stop promoting your project. You have to promote your project from the day that you announce it, to the day that it launches, to the day that it's fully funded and completely finished. Post it everywhere you can. Talk about it every chance that you get. You can't really be shy when it comes to getting your campaign out there. I found all these tips to be super helpful and I really feel like I owe the success of my campaign to remembering these tips and actually applying them as much as I possibly could. I set up my goals and rewards based on a few different things. The easiest place to start was finding out how much the actual production of the product was going to cost. I knew I needed to be able to produce the minimum quantity for pins, which is 100 pieces. So I got that price quoted first and foremost. Then I added in estimates for packaging for the actual product, as well as the price of shipping materials to actually send the pins out to my backers. You can actually add in the postage cost here and kind of make it invisible to your backers and supporters, or you can let Kickstarter charge them an estimated shipping cost whenever they submit their actual pledge and purchase. I chose the latter, but I gave them a slightly discounted shipping rate and just made sure that I could cover that with the amount that I was using as my goal. I wanted to get the project made first and foremost. If I profited or made any money on the back end, that was just gonna be a bonus for me. Money. I really just wanted to make sure that my pins could get made and I could afford to do that with the support of my backers. I set up my rewards in tiers so that my purchasers and backers could choose from getting one gold pin, one silver pin, or both. And I priced each reward tier accordingly. After my campaign was fully funded, I added in a stretch goal of a third colorway. When the funding had gone up to $300, I offered a black on black version of my pin. New backers now have the opportunity to buy one of those or one of the original colorways. Previous backers were given the opportunity to update their pledge to include the black pin or edit it so that they would get the black pin instead of their original choice. People can edit their pledges at any time to increase or decrease the amount of money they pledged or the amount of products that they want to buy. They can also change their reward tier as many times as they want before your campaign is completely funded. As my goals were being surpassed and the pledges were getting higher and higher, I added additional tiers for my backers to get a sticker of the design of the pin, as well as a little one inch button that I had gotten made previously. All they had to do was add a few extra dollars and they could get these extra rewards. Once my campaign was fully funded and completed, I began the production process. Kickstarter actually takes a while to send you the money that they collect, and I wish I was more aware of this for my production timelines. I know how long my pins usually take to be produced, so I added a couple of extra weeks to give myself some padding, but I did not account for the extra two weeks that it takes for Kickstarter to release the funds. So yeah, waiting around for that money to process actually just ate up the two weeks of padding that I gave myself and I was cutting it super close. Oh no, my brains. Since I knew the money was coming, I actually went ahead and paid for the production out of my own pocket, which is something I don't think I could have done if I had a much higher campaign. If I had raised a few thousand dollars for pins that I needed to spend on the production, it probably wouldn't have gone down the same way. Yeah, it was definitely not the ideal situation that I wanted to be in, but I was lucky enough to be able to do it so that I wasn't cutting it so close with the extra padding that I no longer had. So basically, I'm giving you tip number five, which is give yourself a couple of extra weeks for padding on top of your padding to make sure that you can get your funds within your time frame. While my pins were in production, I took this time to design the packaging and get it printed. I also got the stickers made in this time frame. The stickers took about two weeks less to produce than the pins did, so I had plenty of time in between. My buttons were already made, so I wasn't worried about the timeline on that. 
If your items don't have a long production time, I wouldn't count on this extra space and I would just get everything made all at once. Fulfilling orders is a very tedious process, but I was pretty lucky to already be set up for this in my home office. I have a thermal label printer as well as access to account that allows me to buy postage directly from USPS. I bought a ton of envelopes on Amazon while I was waiting for my pin production so I'd be ready to hit the ground running. There's a super important step here, which is to reach out to all of your backers and collect their information. Kickstarter lets you send a survey to all of your backers to collect some information like their shipping addresses, emails, and other contact. But really, only about 30% of my backers actually saw these messages and replied with their information that I needed. So yeah, I just kept hitting them up and asking for the information and getting more and more details little by little as I went. Luckily, most of this happened within my production time frame, but at the end, there were still three people that had not responded. Luckily, I knew two of those people personally, so I was able to just reach out through text and get their information that I needed. But the last person was a stranger and I had no way of contacting them other than sending them messages on Kickstarter. Eventually, after I had already sent out most of my orders, they realized how much time had passed and reached out to me on Instagram and I was able to tell them what was going on and that I had been trying to reach them. <coughs> so yeah, everything got taken care of and all of my orders were sent out. I'll leave some links to the equipment that I use below because honestly, some of that stuff was just life-saving for this project. So yeah, that's basically how it all came together from beginning to end. I really hope this video was helpful and that you were able to learn a little bit more about my Kickstarter journey. I just wanted to be completely transparent about how it all came together and let you know that this is a very, very doable thing. I'm also willing to bet that all of the tips and tricks that I learned and used are scalable from smaller and larger projects. So now for my big announcement. It's no surprise, I'm launching my newest Kickstarter campaign. My newest pin design is based off of my popular Existential Dread smiley face design, and it's been one of my best-selling stickers and prints on my Society6 page. I've wanted to make this one into a pin for a while, so I figured now is the time to jump back on Kickstarter and hopefully get this thing crowdfunded again. Check out the link below for my campaign page, and if you sign up there, Leave a comment letting me know what you'd want to see for the stretch goals if we make it that far this time. I'm really excited about this one, so I hope you guys check it out. If this is your first time checking out one of my videos, I'm a graphic designer and I post a lot of tips, tricks, and tutorials for Photoshop and Illustrator. I'm also starting to show a lot more behind the scenes of my processes. If that's the kind of content you want to see here, please consider subscribing to my channel. You can also hit that little like button down there. It helps me out tremendously. It lets YouTube know that this is a good quality video and that it should show it to other people that it thinks will get value from it. You can also hit that little bell notification down there so you can be notified every time I release a new video. If you want to see some of my day-to-day -day stuff, you can check out my Instagram at NickQ or my TikTok at NickQ83. All right guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And like always, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.